Isn't this just the saddest sight in general aviation? A hangar-bound airplane with the engine ripped out of its nose. Hello, everyone. I'm Paul Bertarelli, reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. This is our 1938 J3C Cub. We're getting an engine overhaul, and we're upgrading from a 65-horsepower engine to a 75-horsepower engine. And in order to absorb that enormous amount of torque, we're going to need a new one of these, a Sentinel's wooden prop. Now, Sentinel still has a pretty lively business building wooden props, and we're going to take a look at how they do it. And to learn how these props are made, we've come to Sentinic, which is in Plant City, right near the airport in Plant City, south of Lakeland. And Don Rowell is going to run us through the process of how wooden props are made. All of our blanks are manufactured from laminated birch. Uh, they can have uh, any number of different laminations from four up to six or eight, depending on the propeller design. The wood is selected based on color and for grain and the lack of knots and then uh, the patterns are laid up and marked off based on uh, the different uh, the prop designs. And then once we've selected the boards and they are planed down to finished thickness, then they are laminated using resorcinol. After a seven to 10 day cure, they are then sent off to the CNC area for CNC machining. After the blank is cured for seven to 10 days, we then bring the blank over to mill the hub face and uh, bore the bolt holes and uh, the center bore. And that's done in a CNC vertical mill, uses a variety of tools, drills, mills, chamfer tools. So once it leaves this machine, the entire hub will be complete with all the bolt holes, center bore, and chamfers. And the process takes about five to 10 minutes, depending on the size of the center bore and the number of holes that go in the propeller. After the propeller hubs are milled, then all the uh, propellers are mounted onto our CNC router where we profile the blade shape. And this is done, uh, can be done one at a time or up to five propellers at a time. Even though the propellers are CNC profiled, they still need hand finishing and hand work. So the propellers are hand carved using spoke shaves and sandpaper, and we utilize airfoil templates to maintain template fit and protractors to maintain blade angle on the backside of the prop. And all the while doing this, the propeller must maintain a balance and be carved to within a balanced tolerance. Once the propellers leave the carving operation, if they get metal tipping, they come to the metal tipping operation where a stainless leading edge and cap are installed, or in some cases, a brass leading edge and cap are installed. The leading edges are installed using screws and the caps are installed using rivets, which are bucked uh, by hand. After carving, a lot of our propellers actually get a fiberglass covering over them for environmental protection and this is that operation right here. We use a wet layup system using a two-part epoxy and a fiberglass cloth that is uh, squeegeed and uh, peel plied over for application. We use a marine spar varnish for our clear finish, very durable and will darken to a very nice patina over time. After painting, the propellers come out for final inspection and application of the famous Sensenic trademark before they get packaged into custom cardboard boxes for shipping. Oh, and by the way, we often get asked about that metal sleeve in the center of the propeller. That's actually not a metal sleeve. That is an aluminum pigmented paste that we paint in there to seal the end grain. You can find out more about Sensenic props on www.sensenic.com. Propellers leave the carving operation. If they get metal tipping, they come to the metal tipping operation where a stainless leading edge and cap are installed, or in some cases, a brass leading edge and cap are installed. The leading edges are installed using screws and the caps are installed using rivets, which are bucked uh, by hand. 